they do not believe that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger. Any Muslim who says that Prophet Muhammad is not the last and final messenger, he is outside the fold of Islam. Ahmadiyya, the modern deviant sect from Islam. The Ahmadiyya Qadiani community was founded in British India in 1889. Even though it comprises roughly 10 million followers from 204 countries, Ahmadiyya does not make up a majority in any of the world's Islamic countries. Rather, they are in the minority wherever they live. The movement was started by the false theologian and Islamic reformist Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, 1835-1908. Born in the Punjab province in what was then British India, the preacher claimed to be a follower prophet, Zili Nabi, and a messiah, which the Ahmadiyya also equate him with a Mahdi, or the one who is guided by God. As such, to this time, his followers believe he received revelations from God. The founder's contentious claim also led to rifts within the Ahmadiyya itself, and eventually to a split within the Ahmadiyya himself, after Mirza Ghulam Ahmad's death. One group, which disputed the leader's claim of being a prophet, settled in Lahore, the Lahori Ahmadiyya movement. Those convinced of the veracity of Ahmad's claim founded a spiritual caliphate in Qadian, his birthplace. His current successor, Mirza Masroor Ahmad, who Ahmadis members regard as the fifth caliph, a false caliph resides in London. We, the mainstream Muslims, reject their false claims. Ahmadis' main headquarters is in London. Some 40,000 of its members live in Germany. The remaining are in many parts of the world, the Ahmadiyya reformist community, residing chiefly in Pakistan, though there are communities in India and West Africa, and to some extent in Great Britain, Europe, and the United States, is a highly organized reform and non-Muslim community with a considerable financial base funded by the British government and anti-Islam forces to harm Islam. Its members are zealous missionaries, preaching Ahmadi beliefs as the one true Islam and according to them, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as the last prophet. Their missionary claim and says that it is the fastest growing religion in the world. However not. Mirza Qadiani was an ordinary clerk and perhaps a sincere preacher in early life and a prolific counter-missionary. But power, fame, and self-aggrandizement eventually got to his head, and he declared himself the Mahdi, the Messiah, and a prophet all in one. His following became more of a heretical cult than the mainstream Islamic religion. He was also a peace extremist, excessively preaching peace and apolitical stances at the expense of justice and human rights. This of course suited the British colonial government in India very well, and his movement thus earned great favor with the British. And then he started different false claims. Mirza Qadiani was died in toilet in a very bad condition. After Ghulam Ahmad's death, his followers disputed whether he had really claimed to be a prophet and if so, what he meant by his prophethood. Nonetheless, his devotees formed a community of believers and elected a caliph to lead them. The Qadianis have strong ties with Israel. Israel has opened centers and schools for them and helped them to publish a magazine which is their mouthpiece to print books and publications for distribution worldwide. The fact that they are influenced by Judaism, Christianity, and al batiniyya is clear from their beliefs and practices, even though they claim to be Muslim. The mainstream true Muslims who follows Allah and the last and final messenger of Allah, who follows the true and correct message of Islam, the Quran and Sunnah. As Muslims, we believe that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger of Allah, there is no prophet after him, he is the seal of the prophets. Therefore, those who reject him is not a Muslims. Allah will deal with him. As far as the Ahmadi Jamaat is concerned, there have been fatwas given by many scholars, many scholars in different parts of the world, that because they do not believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 40, Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mirjalikum. That Muhammad is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah and he is seal of the Prophet. Allah is all knowing, full of knowledge. So, based on this, any Muslim who says that Prophet Muhammad is not the last and final messenger, he is not following the basic principles of Islam. Finality of prophethood is considered to be divine and an important matter. There is no need of discussion and evidence of it. Finality is mentioned in the Holy Quran as well as in various Sahih narrations. As Allah says in the Quran, 
Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets, and Allah is knowing of all things. Al-Quran verse 40 It clearly shows that the holy prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final prophet. Therefore, no other prophet is to appear after him. Thus, the finality of the Prophet of Islam is nicely concluded from the above verse as the Muslims of the early period of Islam also understood it very clearly, and they don't have any doubt in the finality of the prophethood of his eminence. So scholars have said that Ahmed, they don't believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last. What they say, they make a difference between Nabi and Rasul. In Arabic, Nabi means a prophet. Rasul means a prophet who has been given a risala, has been given a message. So every Rasul is a Nabi, but every Nabi is not a Rasul. So when the Quran says Khatmun Nabiin, he is the seal of the Prophet, it includes Rasul and Prophet both. What the Ahmed say? No, no, no. When it says Nabi, that means the Prophet with message is last. But Prophet without message is yet to come, can come. And then they say that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadian is a Prophet without a message. Now this is again the basic fundamental of Islam. Any person who says that Muhammad is not the last and final prophet, he is outside the fold of Islam. There are various ahadiths with regards to the finality of prophethood. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas has narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, You are to me as Harun was to Musa, alayhi salam, except that there is no prophet after me. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa salam said, I have been sent for all the people of the world, and prophethood has ended with me. Abu Amama has narrated from the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he said, O people, no prophet is to come after me, and there is no nation, Ummah, after you. So worship Allah, perform the five daily obligatory prayers, observe the fasts of the month of Ramadan, perform the Hajj of Kaaba, and pay the zakat of your wealth, so that yourselves are purified and obey the ones who are vested with authority among you, so that you may enter paradise. Amirul Mominin Hazrath Umar radiallahu anhu said, Almighty Allah sent the Holy Prophet S. at a time when no prophet existed on the earth, and there was a time gap between them and discord had developed among the people. Thus by sending him, he ended prophethood and revelation came to an end. It is concluded from his traditions and others ahadiths that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the seal of prophets, and that after him no other prophet came and nor any prophet is going to come. It was also stated that the prophet of Islam, at the beginning of his mission, introduced himself as the seal of prophets, and all those who accepted his prophethood, they also accepted the finality of his prophethood. Therefore no separate evidence is required to prove the finality of the prophet of Islam. Now folks, we break the matter thoroughly in front of you. We hope now it's clear to you, and you understand it very well. But listen to this carefully. As Muslims we know that. There are many verses of the Holy Quran and several authentic hadiths that clearly point to the fact that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was the last and final prophet and is to be followed by none. We don't need any new prophet and what for? The deen has already been completed as Allah has said in the Holy Quran. This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. Al-Maida 5 verse 3 There are ample references from the most authentic books of hadiths including Bihari and Muslim. As there is already a wealth of hadiths from several authentic books including the following one. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, My position in relation to the prophets who came before me can be explained by the following example. A man erected a building and adorned this edifice with great beauty, but wondered why a brick was missing from that niche. I am like unto that one missing brick, and I am the last in the line of the prophets. Buhari and Muslim Allah has bestowed upon me six favors which the former prophets did not enjoy. I have been endowed with the gift of pithy and perfect speech. I was granted victory owing to my awe. The spoils of war were made lawful unto me. The whole earth has been made the place of worship for me, and it has become the means of purification for me also. In other words, in my religion, Offering of prayers is not confined to certain specified places of worship. Prayers can be offered at any place over the earth. And in case water is not available, it is lawful for my people to perform ablutions with earth, tayamum, and to cleanse themselves with the soil, if water for bathing is scarce. 
I have been sent by Allah to carry his divine message to the whole world, and the line of prophets has come to its final end with me. In Sahih Muslim and Tirmizi, it's mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I am Muhammad, I am Ahmad, I am the effacer and infidelity shall be erased through me, I am the assembler. People shall be assembled on doomsday after my time, and I am the last in the sense that no prophet shall succeed me. The Holy Book Quran was revealed on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the guidance of entire humanity. His message was for social transformation, rather than mere collection of certain rites and rituals. He was only the one man in history who was supremely successful on both religious and secular levels. Today, 15 centuries after his death, his influence is still powerful and pervasive. Most personalities of history are influential in some areas, but Prophet Muhammad is influential in almost all areas of life. He was a messenger of Allah, a leader, a general in the battlefield, a teacher, a spiritual religious figure, a political hero, a lawgiver, a maker of history, and most importantly, the founder of the spirit of the modern age of knowledge, wisdom, and science. Poet Allama Iqbal has pointed out that the Prophet of Islam seems to stand between the ancient world and modern world. Mahatma Gandhi described him as the best of one who holds undisputed sway over the heart of millions of mankind. In his famous work, The 100 Most Influential People, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, American author Mikkel S. Hart placed Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him at the top of the list. Now folks, we invite the Ahmadis kindly and sincerely to accept the true message of Islam, follow the true message of Quran and Sunnah, which is free of things like the nonsense Mirza Ghulam Ahmad brought with him and massacred the Ummah. Now it's their choice.